Hello, today we are defining and using zero exponents and negative exponents. So exponents that are a negative number and exponents that are zero. Um, so we're going to start by doing the ones that we know. We know 4 to the power of 1 is just 4 one time, which is just 4. So we're going to try and figure out right now what's the math going up the list. So we're going to go this direction first. So then if we go up here, 4 to the power of 2 is really 4 two times, or 4 times 4, which is 16. So as we're going up, now we have 4 to the power of 3, which is 4 three times, 4 times 4 times 4. Well, we're just multiplying by 4 one more time. So 16 times 4 is going to give us 64. That's one that you might want to plug in your calculator. So going up the list, all I'm doing every time is I'm multiplying by 4. 4 times 4 is 16. 16 times 4 is 64. 64 times 4, if you plug that in your calculator, it's going to give you 256. So now we're going to go back the other direction, going down the list, instead of multiplying to go up, 16 going the other direction, to get to 16 to 4 would be dividing by 4. So if I go down the rest of the way this way, to get to 4 to the power of 0, I'm going to divide by 4 again. 4 divided by 4 is really just 1. So anything to the power of 0 is really going to be 1. Um, if you're not sure, pick a number, any number you want, and put it to the power of 0 in your calculator, and it will give you 1. Reminder that this up arrow means to the power of, that button's above the plus sign on your calculator. So anything to the power of 0 is just 1. So 4 divided by 4 is 1. Then if I continue down here, divide by 4 again, we have, well, just 1 divided by 4, which really is 4 to the power of negative 1. If that's confusing, all we're doing is we're moving this to the bottom of the fraction and making the exponent a positive. We normally don't write 4 to the power of 1. We normally just write 4. But 1 over 4 to the power of 1 is still just 1 over 4, which is how we got 1 fourth. Then if I go down again, if I divide by 4 again, it's really dividing by 4 two times, which is 1 to over 16. 1 fourth and 1 fourth would be, if you multiply, 1 sixteenth. Which makes sense because if I bring this 4 to the power of 2 to the bottom, 4 squared is 16. 4 times 4 is 16, and it's in the denominator on the bottom. So all we're doing is taking our exponent, moving it to the bottom, now it's a positive 2, and now 4 to the power of 2 is 16. So we're just moving our negative exponent to the positive, or to the bottom, and making them positive. So this last one, I can take 4 to the power of negative 3, move it to the bottom of the fraction, so it'd be 4 to the power of 3, and I could just evaluate it. So 4 to the power of 3, we already evaluated up here, is 64. So this is just 1 over 64. If you're not sure, you could plug 4 to the power of negative 3 into your calculator, and it will give you 1 over 64. It might not write it as 1 over 64, but it will give you that as a decimal. However, we don't want decimals. We want everything in fraction form. So review what we just learned here. Any number, a, they just picked a number, it, to the power of 0 is 1. Anything to the 0 power is 1. But you can't have 0 to the 0 power. It doesn't work. If you try to plug that into your calculator, it will just tell you it's undefined. Um, so any other number, like here, 5 to the power of 0 is just 1. And then here, anything with a negative exponent, any negative number up here, is really the reciprocal of the positive exponent. Same thing if it's a positive, we'd have to take the reciprocal to get the negative. Meaning, for example here, I'm going to use a different number, 4 to the power of negative 2. If I want this a positive exponent, I have to move it to the bottom of the fraction and make it a positive 2. If this is confusing, we'll go through many examples to show or hopefully clarify this. So we want to evaluate or solve this. Not just simplify, remember we learned those words the other day, 
So what we're going to do to get rid of this fraction, to take the reciprocal or move it to the bottom of the fraction, I first need to make this a fraction, so flip over 1. And now I need to take this piece and move it to the bottom. Move and make positive, I like to say. So I'm still having a fraction here. 3 to the power of 2 is now on the bottom. And there would be a 1 on the top, because you're really flipping this. Um, or you can think of 3 to the negative 2 power is still multiplied by 1. You just need a placeholder there. It's not 0, so it's going to be 1. You know 3 squared is really 3 times 3, which is 9. So we could write this as 1 over 9. Then we learned any number to the power of 0 is just 1. It doesn't matter what number it is. Anything to the power of 0 is 1. Then down here, uh, you might want to write this two times. However, this is not a negative exponent. It's a, uh, it's, it is a negative exponent. It's not a positive. So I'm going to give you an example that we did the other day. We had, for example, x squared or x over y, all in parentheses, squared. Let me try that again. x over y squared. And what we did is we wrote this two times, x over y, x over y, to tell you that there's two x's and there's two y's. So instead of going through that whole process, we just put this two, gave the exponent to both parts. So that's what I'm going to do on this one, is give the exponent to both parts. So I'm going to say this is negative 1, or not negative 1, positive 1. And then we have the negative 2 exponent, and down here we have a 5 with the negative 2 exponent. So we know that these are both negative exponents. I need to move this one to the bottom, and I need to move this one to the top to get rid of the negative exponents. So the 5 to the power of 2 is now on the top, that negative exponent became a positive, and this 1 is now on the bottom and it has a power of 2 exponent on the top. So now we have 5 squared, 5 times 5 on the top is 25, 1 times 1 on the bottom is just 1, so our answer is just 25. One thing about these negative exponents also is that if it's already a fraction, if you wanted to do this another way, Here's another way to do the same problem. To get rid of the negative exponent, you could flip what's inside here already and make it 5 over 1, and the exponent becomes a positive. Because this is really 5 squared over 1 squared, which is exactly what we had here. So either way, you can flip the inside of the fraction right away, or distribute it to both and then simplify. Now this next one. 0 to the power of negative 5, it's not a fraction, so I'm going to make it a fraction. So any negative exponents I need to move to the bottom. So I have 0 to the positive 5 power now. Well, 0 times 0 times 0 times 0 is still 0. So we have 1 divided by 0. You can't do that. This is what we call undefined. Um, your calculator is going to say error if you try and plug that in. It's not going to work. All right. So now we have one exponent that's negative and one that's positive. We need to evaluate by getting rid of our negative exponents. We don't like them. So this isn't a fraction right now. I'm just going to make it one big fraction. And move the one that's a negative exponent to the bottom. So this 6 to the power of negative 4 is now on the bottom, 6 to the 4th. This 6 to the 4th stayed on the top. If you want to put times 1 down here on the bottom, you can, but it's not going to change. It's still 6 to the 4th. If you want to write this out, this would be 6 times 6 times 6 times 6. Same on the bottom. But they're all going to cancel out. So we really have 1 times 1 times 1 times 1, which is just 1. Or some of you know like 8 over 8 is just 1. 6 to the 4th over 6 to the 4th. It's the same number on the top and the bottom. It's just 1. All right, next I'm going to write everything that's in parentheses. On the outside it says 2 times. So 4 to the negative 2 times 4 to the negative 2. Well, I don't like negative exponents. I need to get rid of those. So I'm going to move them to the bottom of my fraction. So this goes to the bottom, and that goes to the bottom. So we really have on the top nothing, but it would be times 1. And on the bottom I have a 4 squared and another 4 squared now. So how many 4's do I really have? Well, there's 
two fours here and two fours here. So I have four to the fourth. This next one only has one negative exponent. This piece needs to be moved to the top. So three to the power of four now on the top, not a negative, a positive. And we really just flip this, or if you want, there's a one on the bottom because um, three to the negative fourth times one is still three to the negative fourth there. But we don't really need to divide by one, so your answer would just be three to the power of four. If you want to multiply these out, you can. Otherwise, this is a fine answer. So on this next one, this 5 to the power of 2 is a positive exponent, so it stays right where it's at. This negative exponent needs to be moved to the bottom. So we have two 5s now down at the bottom. There's nothing on the top, it's just a 1, because this could be multiplied by 1. So how many 5s do we have? Well, we have two 5s here and another 5 here. So now we have 1 over 5 to the power of 3. If you want to multiply 5 times 5 is 25, times 5 again is 125, either one of these would be okay. So flip over to the next page. It says simplify your answer and write using only positive exponents. So we need to get rid of these negative exponents. For a minute right now, I'm just going to have you ignore, don't do this, everything that's inside here. We only need to write this three times. So we're going to write it three times. It says 2xy to the negative fifth times 2xy to the negative fifth times 2xy to the negative fifth. So I don't want negative exponents. It says we only want positive exponents. So I'm going to make this a big fraction and move all of the negative exponents to the bottom. This 2 would really be to the power of 1. x would really be to the power of 1. The y is the only thing that has a negative exponent, so all the y's are what are being flipped or taken the reciprocal of, moved to the bottom. So we have on the top we have left over a 2 and an x, a 2 and an x, a 2 and an x. Then in the bottom I have y to the fifth, y to the fifth, and y to the fifth. So if we simplify this on the top, I have 2 to the third power, 2 times 2 times 2. If you want, 2 times 2 times 2 is just 8. And then x is on the top, 1, 2, 3, x to the power of 3. And then y's, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then 5 here as well. That gives us y to the power of 15. So we have 15 y's on the bottom. So now this next one looks a little bit tricky. Only look at where you have a negative exponent. And this part right here is the only part that has a negative exponent. This is going to stay where it's at. It's a positive, positive, positive. I don't care about this negative. It's not a negative exponent. It's a negative 4. So I'm going to move this to the bottom and leave everything else where it's at. I'm going to write what's there first. We have y to the fifth. And we have a negative 4x squared y squared. And now we also have this 2x to the negative 2 power. Oh, but now it's not negative, it's a positive 2. So I'm going to write this all out so I can simplify. Because if I have the same letters on the top and the bottom, which I see y's on both, I know I need to simplify. I can also combine my x's too. But first I'm going to write it all out. I have 5 y's, and then I have a negative 4, and then x squared, meaning there's two x's there, y squared, which means it's two y's, and then 2x two times, 2x, 2x, and I could put multiplication between all these because they're all touching, it's all multiplied. So I see y's in the top and the bottom, I can cancel two of them out. So now I'm just going to write what I have left over. I have 1, 2, 3 y's in the top, or y to the third. And I have a 4 and 2's on the bottom, so I'm just going to multiply them all. Uh, negative 4 times 2 is negative 8. Negative 8 times 2 is negative 16. And then I have x's. I have 1, 2, 3, 4 x's, so x to the fourth. So that would be the best answer. You need to cancel out or simplify your y's and combine the x's. 
All right, moving right along. Looking at this problem, we only again want positive exponents. The only one that's negative, it's not the 3, it's not the x, it's only this y. Because this would really have an exponent of 1 and that would really have an exponent of 1. So this is the only part that needs to be brought to the bottom. So I'm going to rewrite what we have first. We have the 3x and then I have 9x to the third y. And now I also have y to the third because that became a positive 3. So if you want, you can write this all out. We have 3 and an x and then 9, 3x is here a y, and three more y's. So I see an x on the top and the bottom, so one of these has to cancel out. Some of you may have been able to see that from up here. You could have canceled and made that a 2. That's fine. Um, and then we can also simplify our numbers here. We can divide this by 3 and divide this by 3 to give us 1 over 3. If you wanted to write 3 over 3 right away, and leave it like it is, we can simplify at the end. If you want to leave it as 3 and 9, that's fine. We have two x's here, or x squared, and four y's, so y to the fourth. So this is what I was saying from this point, if you wanted to divide by 3 here, that's fine, and you'd have 1 over 3x squared, y to the fourth. All right, if you have questions on that one, let me know. Um, but all I did was simplify the numbers. None of the x's and y's changed. All right, next one. This negative is the whole piece in parentheses. This y to the fourth stays there. Oops, that was super crooked. There we go. So the y to the fourth, I'm just going to write there because that's what's staying. This negative x squared, it has a positive x one, so it stays there. But this y to the negative 6 needs to be moved to the top. So this piece here is going down to the bottom. We now have, in parentheses, 3x to the power of 3. It's a positive 3 now. And this y is now on the top with a positive 6. So we need to write out what we have first. There's four y's here. 1, 2, 3, 4 times another 6 y's. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And if I want, I could put a multiplication sign between each one. It's all multiplied. In the denominator, I have a negative. It's really like a negative 1. And then I have an x and an x. Two x's here. And then I have 3x three, three times. 3x, three 3x, three 3x. Three These are all multiplied. This is what we call expanded form. So next, we're going to do a little simplifying here. We're going to combine our like terms, because we don't have any uh, that we can cross off on the top and the bottom. So total y's on the top, we have y to the power of 4 plus 6 more is 10. On the bottom, I have 3 times 3 times 3 times negative 1, so I know your answer is going to be a negative. You could say 3 to the third, um, but if we want 3 times 3 is 9, and 9 times 3 is... It's 27, so I know it's a negative 27. And then I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 x's, so x to the fifth. You can't simplify the x's and the y's because they're different letters. All right, these next three should go pretty quick. This first one may be a little bit longer, but that's okay. Uh, this is not a fraction, so I'm going to make it a fraction because we have a negative exponent. I need to move this whole piece to the bottom and make the exponent a positive. So I have 6x to the negative 2, y to the third. Nothing in here changed. I wrote that exactly what was in here. The only thing that's changing is instead of a negative, now we have a positive 3. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write this out three times. Everything that's in here, three times. It's on the bottom, so we have 6x to the negative 2, y to the third. 6x to the negative 2, y to the third. 6x to the negative 2, y to the third. So out of all of these letters and numbers, the only things that need to move are the negative x squareds, because they're the only ones that have negative exponents. So all of those need to be brought up to the top. So I'm going to have an x squared on the top, x squared, and x squared. 
On the bottom, I have 6 times 6 times 6, or 6 to the power of 3. And then on the bottom, I have y to the third, y to the third, y to the third. Now let's just simplify one more time. This is 2x's here, 2x's here, 2x's here, so we have x to the power of 6, or 6 of them, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I'm going to leave this as 6 to the third. If you want to multiply 6 times 6 times 6, that's fine. And then we have y to the third, so that's 1, 2, 3, y to the third, and y to the third. So this is really 3, 6, 9 y's, y to the 9. All right, this next one, if you just look at the numerator, r to the negative 2, oh, that's negative, we got to move it to the bottom. Same thing here, that's a negative, got to move it to the top. So this s to the negative fourth comes to the top and becomes s to the power of 4. And same thing here, r to the negative 2 power becomes r to the positive 2 power. You can't simplify different letters, so that's it. Here you go. Now this last one is where some people make mistakes. They see that this y needs to go to the top, and they see that the x needs to go to the top. But some people try and lump this together, and you can't. It does not work. This 8 really has a power of 1 or an exponent of 1, so the only thing you get to move is the x. you got to leave the 8 behind on the bottom. And then we have x squared on the top, and y to the power of 6 on the top now as well. That's your answer. Alright, last slide here. This one I believe is also on your homework. It says, a sheet of 67 pound paper has a thickness of 100 to the negative 1 power inch. You know what, you guys? It doesn't, it doesn't matter what kind of paper it is. It could be blue paper. It could be construction paper. It could be green paper. It could be whatever kind of paper you want. It doesn't matter, but you need to know this is how thick the paper is. Because they're going to ask you down here, write and evaluate an expression for the thickness of five sheets of paper. Well, here's the thickness right there. Again, doesn't matter what kind of paper it is. They're trying to trick you with that number. So we have five sheets of paper, but we have to figure out how, how thick is five sheets if each one is 100 to the negative 1 power. Well, can't I just multiply this by the thickness? And it would tell me how thick all of the paper is. So I don't want a negative exponent, so I need to move that to the bottom or the denominator. Let's move this whole piece to the bottom. So the 5 stays in the top, and now I have 100 to the power of positive 1. 100 one time is just 100, so I really don't need that exponent. All I have to do now is simplify. I can divide both of these by 5. 5 divided by 5 is 1. 100 divided by 5 should give me 20. So 1 20th of an inch is how thick 5 sheets of paper are. They want to know the exact same thing, but now for the total thickness of 2 to the power of 3 sheets of paper. So I have 2 to the power of 3 times the thickness, which is 100 to the negative 1 power. It's really thin paper, I guess. So again, I'm going to make this a fraction so I can move my negative exponent to the denominator. 2 to the third stays there. And I have 100 to the power of 1, or just 100. So I'm going to evaluate what is 2 to the power of 3. Well, remember that's 2 3 times. 2 times 2 is 4. Times 2 again would give us 8. So I have 8 over 100. But I can simplify that. I can divide by 2. Better yet, I can divide by 4. 8 divided by 4 should give me 2. 100 divided by 4 will give me 20. So we have two twenty-fifths of an inch. All right, that is it for today. Good luck on your homework. I'm going to tell you to be super careful with, for example, number 14 and 18. The number in front, like the 6 and the 8, they don't have an exponent, so they're not going to move. We did this one on our notes, but you do need to copy it down. And then... I would like you to do these other ones as well. If this one's a little tricky, that's okay. Try it and see what you can do.